Hi, I'm Lucas Mack, and welcome to another episode of The Golden Rule Revolution, where inspiration and purpose come from treating people like people and nothing less. Today, I want to ask you a very simple question. However, it may not have a simple answer. Here's the question What is the vision that you have for your life? Truly, Deep down, what is the vision? If you could do anything, if you could wave a magic wand and life would be as you dream it should be, what would that look like? What is the vision for your life? I believe each of us from a very young age There were moments when we understood that we were meant for something great. We were meant for something bigger than our current circumstance. And life happens. And life immediately reminds us of the present moment. Whether that be through pain, whether that be through distractions or pleasure, whatever it may be, takes away from that little glint of dream or vision or hope of something being more purposeful than our current circumstance. So let me ask you again, what is the vision for your life? The wise king and prophet King Solomon wrote, where there is a lack of vision, the people perish. Where there's a lack of vision, the people perish. Well, why is that? It is because vision allows us to look up. It sets our eyes up above our current circumstance. Sometimes when we have a vision and we're experiencing adversity or hard situations, it allows us to kind of peek over the horizon and we know we're going to get through this. That is the power of having a dream. That is the power of having a vision. You see, dream and vision are synonyms. What is the dream that you have for your life? What is the vision you have for your life? For without looking up and seeing beyond your present circumstance, people perish because they get sucked in the mire and the fear and the despair and the doubt when adversity is presented to them. So it is imperative for your own emotional state of being that you rediscover or discover for the first time the vision that you have for your life. For a lack of vision, the people perish. The wise king and prophet Solomon also wrote something akin to that. He said, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. When you have hope for something, that something good's going to happen and it doesn't come through, how does that make you feel? Does it make you feel inspired or does it make you feel down? Hope when it doesn't come, what that which we hope for does not arrive, it makes our heart sick. We start to despair, have doubt, Maybe we never knew what we were talking about in the first place. Everything starts to erode without hope. Now, the formula that you must understand is this. No vision, no hope. No hope, sick heart. And when we have a sick heart, our culture eventually begins to die. The culture of love and inspiration inside us and the culture of love and inspiration inside our society. It begins to die. Because where there is a lack of vision, the people perish. Now, this is something that's so important for you to understand because your vision is uniquely your vision. It's not someone else's vision. It's not their vision of your life for your life. It's your vision of your life for your life. The sad thing and interesting thing I think that's happening right now, especially in social media, is we get to see 
the presentation of other people living out their supposed vision, which then creates comparison, which then steals us of our joy. For the great philosopher Teddy Roosevelt said, comparison is the thief of joy. And it is. Comparison is the thief. The thief of joy. Now, why would you compare in the first place? If you truly had a vision for where you're going and what you're doing, that every day is intentional and purposeful and missional, every conversation you have with a person, every, every, everything you do at work is for that purpose, then you're not going to look to the left or to the right. You're going to look straight on. And you're going to look up even when presented with difficult circumstances. However, when we start to compare and we don't have the confidence in our own vision for our lives, we start to lose our joy. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Right now in our society, around the world, you could turn on any news outlet of supposed reports of what is currently happening and all that's purpose is to erode your hope. I mean, think about it. Do you ever turn on the news and be like, wow, things are really happening in the right direction. We're really moving forward. Life is good. No. The media is geared to erode our hope, to keep us in fear. So then we go into our lives, we retreat, and then we just kind of buckle down. But the majority of us wake up someday and say, what is this life? This is not the life I dreamt of as a child. This is not the vision I know I'm destined for. There is something greater. And the decision to experience and get to that place of discovering our true vision starts with getting incredibly still and incredibly quiet. For our vision comes, I believe, from our soul. And our soul speaks in a very still, small voice. It, it, was, it will not overrule your mind or heart. It will not overrule those of others speaking to you it's just going to speak confidently, purposefully. You're meant for something more. You're destined for something greater. Life is good. It is good. And when we see life as good, we can go forth and understand in the goodness of life, despite the difficulties, despite the pain, despite the suffering, despite all the adversity that we experience, we can still find the good in the bad, find the love from the fear, find the light from the darkness, because our soul is leading us forward. So what is the vision for your life? I encourage everyone to take a pause in this time of the year, a few months until the new year, and we get to really dig into our vision. And then know this, the bigger the vision, the bigger the bully. I heard this from Katie Lynn, who I've had on this podcast. She said, the bigger the vision, the bigger the bully. Meaning, If your vision is incredibly big, if you feel like you are destined for something great in this world and you step out and forth and up to achieve that vision, your ego is going to freak out and it's going to shoot darts and arrows inside you and say, whoa, I'm not ready for this. I want to keep you safe because our ego is meant to keep us safe. So the bigger the vision, the louder that ego voice is going to be inside of you. And most of us, instead of trusting the vision that we have and trusting 
the voice, the still small voice, and going forth, listen to the ego that says, don't, you're going to get hurt. Or look at what they're doing. You're not like them. And so the message I want to give you today is whatever your vision and dream is for your life is beautifully your vision and your dream for your life. It is beautifully yours to live, to experience, to discover. And it doesn't mean that everything is going to be kumbaya, fluffy, rose-petaled pathways. It simply means that the pathway will be yours. It will be your destiny, your dream, your drive. And nothing And no one can stop that from happening when you truly live into your vision. The only thing that holds us back is fear. Fear holds us back. And when we compare, we're living in fear. When we doubt, we're living in fear. When we despair, we're living in fear. So have a vision which provides you hope And stay with that hope because without hope, your heart becomes sick. And when our hearts become sick, we have a dying culture. You will shine forth the more brightly right now in our society when you live your vision for, sadly, most people aren't. They're living someone else's vision for their lives. How many times was the word should implanted into your psyche growing up. You should, 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 should. You should be like this. You should be like that. Stop being like this. You should be, be, be something other than you are. It's time for all of us to wake up and discover who we actually get to be apart from others' voices speaking the shoulds And remove even the should in our life and simply enjoy who we are with a beautiful vision and dream. Your dream is worth pursuing with every reckless abandonment that you can give it because it's yours. And when you look back someday on your life, on your deathbed, You can look back with no regret because you lived your dream. You lived your vision and let go of the results. Let go of the results. Simply live. Simply be who you were meant to be. For where there is a lack of vision, the people perish. And hope deferred makes a heart sick. So we get to hold on to our vision so we can have hope and healthy hearts and a healthy culture. The awakening happens when you awaken. Not when someone else awakens, but when you awaken. And when you get to that place of stillness, of quietness, of contemplative meditation and prayer and awareness and stillness to know yourself, to know God, to understand nature, and then to go forth and nurture your dream and your vision. This is what our world is missing. Inspired people who love people to go forth and serve people. For at the end of the day, I truly believe our visions and dreams all can be boiled down to doing great things for others. I think your dream and your vision can be boiled down to doing great things for others. And all that comes with that, the struggle, the adversity, the lessons learned are all beautiful. 
And like I said on a previous podcast, we get to thank every person along our journey for playing the perfect role that they played in our lives to make us the person we are supposed to be. And now that we can acknowledge that, we're free to pursue the vision we have in our life. And even when the bully inside of us, the voice, the ego starts to speak and say, what are you doing? Stay safe, stay inside, hunker down. You get to trust that life is good. And there is a loving God who loves you infinitely. I heard recently this saying, God is love. So God cannot not love you. God is love and God cannot not love us. So you get to trust, you get to go forth, and you get to live your vision. Thank you for listening to this episode. Thank you for tuning in. This is the Golden Rule Revolution. I am your host, Lucas Mack, where inspiration and purpose come from treating people like people and nothing less. I'll talk to you on the next episode.